Kenya's long overdue review of electricity prices is finally in progress with proposed tariffs up for public review in May before possibly, if they're all approved, uh, coming into effect in July. But remember, power prices in the East African nation have gone up by anywhere between 17 to 26 percent for retail consumers in the 12 months through to the end of April. And angry consumers here are now demanding changes to how Kenya's power prices are designed. Earlier on, I spoke to the CEO of the country's monopoly power distribution company, Kenya Power. I asked him if there's still a strong business case for keeping thermal power plants around. If you look at your bill, um, there are certain elements that uh, constitute your bill. Of course, there is the consumption itself or the energy cost. You have, uh, you know, VAT, you have fuel cost charge, you have other levies. Mm -hmm. that form part of the, pill, of the bill. If you look at those levies, they constitute over 50% of the actual uh, cost of energy. Mm -hmm. So if we were to get rid of all the other charges and just remain with the cost of power, that cost would uh, perhaps be about 40-45% mm -hmm. of what, what you are paying at the moment. Mm -hmm. Would you support because right now we're in the middle of a review cycle for tariffs anyway, would you support a removal of at least a VAT? If, let's leave the others intact, but let's remove VAT from power prices. Would you support that? Of course, it is, it is, a, it is something that must be discussed as a, as, as a country because, look, when we factor in VAT in there, that is money uh, that goes into the state. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets into the consolidated fund to enhance other operations of government. If we decide to remove it, then we must think as a country where we are going to plug in that all. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a debate that uh, you know will be taken. But I mean, surely care. Kenya Power must have a position because at, at the moment, we're, right, we're smack in the middle of a review process. You asked for tariff review last year. Of course, if right. you asked me as, as as the captain of Kenya Power, I would say remove it because mm -hmm. that would essentially imply that then the cost of power comes down. What about the fuel cost adjustment side of it? Because, again, going back to the, the, the generation mix, it, it does vary quite a bit from one year to the next. But we've got more hydro, or not more hydro, we've got more geothermal power coming online. You've got more wind coming online. Over the long run, arguably, the percentage of the generation mix that will be made out of thermal will be falling and falling and falling and falling. Absolutely. Doesn't that justify, therefore, a reduction? In the fuel cost adjustment it is true and if you look at where we've come from uh, just to look at the fcc trend over the last uh, three four years in 2013 we were about 722 us cents mm -hmm. um at the beginning of uh, last year we were at the lowest that was about three 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 point i mean three to two uh, us cents or three shillings and uh, 20 22 cents now that reduction of four shillings or four us cents was mainly as a result of injection of additional uh, generation coming from uh, geothermal. Mm -hmm. Plus, of course, the fact that we had very good hydrological conditions and therefore generation from hydros were very good. But if you look at the effect of the drought that was experienced in this country in the better part of last year mm -hmm. and the early part of this year, it had a lot of effect and therefore it took back the FCC from the low bottom of 233 uh, back to about 5.35, where we are at the moment. But, okay, let me add something else to the equation. We've got at least one gigawatt of coal that's being worked on. All the environmental arguments aside, there's at least one gigawatt of coal generation capacity coming in in the next three, four years, give or take. Given that you've got coal coming online, why do we still need thermal power plants in this country? Is there still a business case for having them online, especially when you've got coal on the way? True, if we were to get coal at 1,000 megawatts, it could come in handy in creating a mix, more particularly, like I've said, where we have a base load uh, you know, being generated from coal. It might not be necessary to, to, to have the thermals. Mm. But remember, we need to look at where we came from. These thermals came on board at a time when everything else was difficult. And obviously then... That was after the 1998 power yes, crisis, yes, right? Yes, yes. Then PPS were signed. Mm -hmm. We also got to look at the exit clauses within these PPS because granted, like you say, they are expensive. They are expensive, but they have seen us through to where we are. What, how much? Moment. Okay, let me let me step back. How much would it cost us to get out of the PPS? 
by us, I mean taxpayers, KPLC. Let's assume for argument's sake that if KPLC decided to avoid those, the, to say, to sell a Greco or Power and Company, guys, it's been real. Thank you for your business, but we're cutting this contract today and say the government had to step in and cover that cost. How much would it cost us? You are looking at anything uh, in the range of uh, slightly above 50 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 50 billion shillings is roughly around half a billion dollars. That's the kind of money we're looking at here.